Hi everyone, this is Kalyan Kumar and welcome to my channel, Chemistry Tutorials. And uh, as you're aware, I'm doing a lot of uh, videos on name reactions. And today it's the turn of a very important reaction called Beckman Rearrangement. So let's understand what Beckman Rearrangement is all about. As you can see, there are two molecules I've drawn here. Let me explain these molecules to you. This light blue one, in fact, let me change the ink color. Uh, let me change it to, let's say, yellow. So this blue the atom is carbon atom. The white ones are hydrogens. And the blue one is nitrogen. And the red one is oxygen. So there is a carbon attached, it is this carbon. Then there is this group CH3. And there is a CH2, CH3. The third hydrogen here is behind, it's hidden. And there is a nitrogen. Nitrogen is attached to OH. So obviously it has got a lone pair. And nitrogen needs one more bond and carbon needs one more bond. Therefore, this bond is double bond. And as you can see, this is called oxime. C double bond NOH. Now, in the product side, if you look here, carbon bonded to O, bonded to NH, N is bonded to CH3. NH, N is bonded to CH3, and then this is bonded to C2H5. So obviously there has to be a double bond here. And this becomes amide. So basically what happens in this reaction is that an oxime becomes an amide and there is a rearrangement because they are isomers. They are functional isomers. So let's understand how this reaction occurs and let's understand what is the mechanism and see some examples. So we start with the definition. When oxymes are treated with acidic catalysts like H+, PCl5, SOCl2, SO3, P2O5, etc., they're transformed into amides that may be substituted. You'll understand this statement once I explain the reaction to you. And obviously, as all named reactions are named after the scientists who discovered them, this is named after Ernst Otto Beckmann, and therefore it's called the Beckmann rearrangement. The acid catalyzed rearrangement of oxymes to amides or cyclic oxymes to lactams is called Beckmann rearrangement, named after the German scientist Ernst Otto Beckmann. So let's see a couple of examples. This is an oxime. And the R and the R prime could be a hydrogen also. And they could be same or different alkyl groups. So this is an oxime. Reacts with an acid. You got to heat it also. First, it forms a compound like this. This compound is called uh, now let me change the color again. Uh, let me bring up uh, perhaps, can I get a blue here? Maybe something like this, yeah. So there is this N-alkyl, alkenimidic acid. We call it N-alkyl alkenimidic acid. But not to worry, we, this, this is of uh, not much of an interest here because this will tautomerize and it will go its, to its so-called keto form and become an amide. The, N trans, the H transfers from O to N, 1-3 shift, and the pi bond shifts from CN to CO. You get an amide. Now, as you can notice, there is one group which has migrated to N. This R prime was sitting with carbon. Now it's attached to N. So we need to find out whether this happens uh, because of a higher migrating amplitude or something else. So that we need to check up. 
So I'm going to do the reverse example where the R and the R prime switch places. So as you can see, the R and the R prime have switched places. And I'm keeping the same R and the same R prime as before. H plus. You get this alkyl, N alkyl, alkyl imidic acid. But you notice here it was R prime that went to N and here it is R which is going to N. Though I've kept the same R and the R prime. So if I keep the same R and R prime in both cases, the migrating amplitude should remain the same. But in one case, R prime is migrating. In the other case, the R is migrating. Therefore, the migration of the group is not based on the migrating aptitude. It is based on something else. And eventually, this becomes the amide. So let's figure out what is this? Why is this happening? The structure of the substituted amide depends on the structure of the oxyme as the migration of the groups does not depend on their migratory aptitude, but on the group that is at transposition to the hydroxyl group. So if you notice in this example, R prime was trans to OH and R prime migrated R is trans to OH, R migrated. So the migration is not based on migrating aptitude. Instead, it is based on which is trans to OH. So it's time for the mechanism. So let's see the mechanism. So here we go. Mechanism step one. In the first step, since you have a H plus and you have OH in the oxyme, the lone pair of oxygen will attack the H+. plus, So the oxyme gets protonated. And the second step is the most important. It's a key step. It's the rate determining step. In the second step, what happens is that water, this particular group, will leave the nitrogen, make the nitrogen electron deficient. Now, if it leaves first and makes the NS+, plus, then the one which is having a higher migrating aptitude in the carbon, R prime or R, one of them will migrate to N. But if the removal of this group and the attack of one of the, these two R's takes place simultaneously, which means it will be typically SN2 type, then the group which is anti to OH2 plus is the one that will migrate. And as I've already told you, it is the group which is trans to OH that migrates. Therefore, in the second step, water leaves the nitrogen atom, making it electron deficient. Since carbon atom is more electropositive than nitrogen atom, electron deficiency is more stabilized on the carbon than on a nitrogen atom. To achieve this, one group from carbon atom migrates to nitrogen atom. But this migration happens in a concerted fashion, along with the removal of water. Very important statement concerted fashion along with the removal of water. Since this is similar to SN2 mechanism, the group that is opposite to the OH group migrates rather than the one that has higher migrating aptitude. So this means if I have this going, then the R prime, the one anti leaves simultaneously and makes the carbon electron deficient rather than the nitrogen. So this is the second step and this is the very key step, slow step. In the next step, water attacks the electron deficient carbon. The third step involves attack by a water molecule on the electron deficient carbon atom. As you can notice, there is H2O here. The lone pair of oxygen attacks the carbon and you get OH2+. In the next step, the H plus is lost. The proton is lost from the OH2+. So Proton is gone and you get OH. So this is your N alkyl. In the last step, the N alkyl alkyl imidic acid tautomerizes to the amide. So in the last step, we're going to have this molecule tautomerizing to give you the amide. And the substituted amide you get like this.
So let's do a couple of examples and this will become more clear to you. So as you can see, I've got this and out of pH and CH3, pH has the higher migrating amplitude than CH3. So let's check which one is moving. And as you notice, it is the CH3 moving because that is the one, the one that is opposite to OH. So it's not based on migrating amplitude. If I switch, if I take a different isomer, the product is different. So sometimes in questions, what they would do is, rather than give you what oxyme, which particular uh, geometric isomer they have, they would rather give you this and make you guess the structure of this oxyme. And the converse is also possible. They can give you the oxyme and they would probably ask you what amide is formed. And if it is a cyclic oxyme, obviously it's going to become a cyclic amide, which is called a lactam. And as you can see, it is this carbon that is opposite to OH, whereas this carbon is with the OH. So the one that migrates is this. This is the one that will be sitting on end. So the ring expands and it becomes a seven-membered ring. Though a seven-membered ring is unstable compared to a six-membered ring, but it does not mean that the reaction of this type does not happen. The difference in the uh, stabilities is not that great. And uh, therefore, it's not always that a stable ring is formed. Always the product has to be more stable than the reactant. That's not true always. There are multiple things that, 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 that actually do happen. Otherwise, reaction would never happen. I mean, after all, a reaction proceeds through a lot of intermediates. So why would a reactant become an intermediate uh, if, if it were to always go through the most stable part? So therefore, what happens is it is ultimately the product stability. Sometimes it is the irreversibility of the reaction due to some other factors. And if the difference in the stability is not much different, and as it is, you're heating it, so you're giving it enough activation energy for this reaction to take place. So that is why you get a cyclic seven-membered amide in this particular case. So this is Beckman rearrangement. And uh, I hope you were able to understand what we discussed in this particular video if required please go through it again and if you have not sus subscribed to, to, to this particular channel please do subscribe to get uh, relevant and timely intimation about the new videos that i keep uploading i'm going to be doing videos on all types of named reactions and once they are done i'm going to do a lot of more videos on different parts of chemistry physical chemistry i'm going to do organic chemistry i'm also going to be doing videos on inorganic chemistry so I hope uh, you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. If there are any questions, any doubts, any comments that you wish to make, please drop them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.